my name is Phil with Precision LED. Today we have a Audi A3 Sportback that we'll be installing LED into your lights on. Now this is actually a 2006 model, the 8P chassis, and this installation is compatible with year models 2003 through 2012. Now the Audi has a sensitive electronic system, meaning if a bulb goes out down your dome, it'll let you know on your dash here is a message display that says bulb out. Now when people switch to LEDs, because an LED uses such little power, um, your dash warning lights come on for all your lights. Now the precision LED lighting package uses something called a canvas packed LED or a resistor packed LED. And that means that it's drawing additional power to let the computer know the bulb is on. And that's what comes in these packages. What also comes is a toolkit with interior trim tools used by professionals with a soft, malleable edge that means you won't be damaging your dash while you're working on the vehicle. These are included for free with every LED kit. The front overhead dome and map lights are a two-step process. You'll be using the crowbar tool provided with you in your interior LED package and using it to work your way around the rim of the clear lens cover to release it. As you can see, there are two guiding rails in the front and two clips in the back that are holding it in place. Now the longer festoon style bulbs can be removed manually with just your hands and replaced with the precision LED canvas resistor packed LEDs. These are polarity specific, so you will need to turn them 180 degrees if they don't turn on the first time. To access the map LEDs, you will use the same crowbar tool to release the panel from the overhead roof liner on all four sides. Just work your way around the tool until you've released all four clips. As you can see from the back panel here, you can see where each clip is holding onto the roof line. Now the map LEDs can be released by pushing in and turning counterclockwise to release the bulb. You will take the new LED and reinsert the bulb and turn clockwise to secure it in position. Once you have tested all the bulbs and made sure that they work, you need to reinstall all the trim panels back into place. Start with the cover that holds the map lights in place first, and then reinsert the dome light cover to finish up your work. For the vanity mirror lights, we'll be using the pointed wedge tool to release the vanity mirror housing from the overhead liner. Use the pointed end on the side that has an indentation to pry out the housing. You'll then use the pointed wedge to release the metal backing or reflective plate to get access to the bulb. You'll be replacing the festoon style bulb with a new LED and first testing it before reassembling the housing back into the liner to make sure it works. This is also a polarity specific bulb, so if it does not work the first time, remember to rotate it 180 degrees and try again. Make sure you put the metal backing back in place before reinserting the vanity mirror light back into the roof line. The trunk light will require two tools along with a resistor and quick splice connectors to install properly. The first step is to remove the trunk light housing from the liner. You're going to be using one of the wedge-shaped tools and gently prying from the spot with the indentation on the plastic lens. Once you have it off, we do need to remove the connector for better access. You're actually going to use two tools to pry off the ends that are holding the connector in place. Once you have the housing removed from the wire connector, you can go ahead and use the quick splice connectors included in your kit to tap into the ground and power wires for the resistor. Once you have the wire taps in place, go ahead and connect the resistor male to female. Now it does not matter which one is power and which one's ground as long as the resistor is making connection to both sides. Once that resistor is wired in, you can go ahead and use the pointed wedge tool to open up the black casing.
replace the halogen bulb with the LED, and close and then open the trunk to activate the trunk light and test to see if it works. If it does not work and the light is blinking, that means that the connection for the resistor is not making contact. If it does seem to work fine, you can insert the resistor into the slot where the housing goes and then reinstall the trunk light housing back into its position.